everybody, welcome back to our second round of our mobility, flexibility, balance, strength, uh, endurance type workout. Um, yeah, this is the first time at this since our last shutdown. Uh, we're not closed down now, but we don't have any guests, so I figured it was a great way to just kind of pick up back where we left off. Um, for those of you who are uh, new to these workouts, um, I really like these workouts just because it's a about really just getting back in touch with your body, you know, checking with yourself, making sure that all systems are go. Um, and I'd say for the past, gosh, since we uh, were holding these classes before, I really have not been very good about keeping up with uh, these types of workouts. Now I've been still training and you know, definitely like pushing my limits, but physically I'm starting to kind of feel like I need to uh, get back on this stuff a little bit more aches and pains, um, and now it's really about time I start managing those aches and pains. So um, these workouts are all just about reconnecting, addressing those issues, uh, and feeling good doing uh, your activity. And you might notice I don't have my mustache anymore, so it's a, it's a new year, it's a new me, you know. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, so right now what I'm doing here is just some ankle circles and I'm gonna start advertising these a little bit more with uh, when we're gonna do these on a consistent basis. So the goal is gonna be uh, Tuesdays and Fridays at one o'clock. And we're gonna try to have some of the staff join us, uh, Sarah join us, and um, we're really gonna be wanting to uh, hold these stretching and mobility classes for our guests here at the lodge. So whether you're an elite, an elite athlete or new to exercise or just wanting something to kind of uh, take away uh, and apply to your day-to-day, -day, these workouts are gonna be really good for you, okay? So what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of running through these um, mobility of my joints, right? So I'm just kind of going through uh, what I call ankle circles here. So notice how my hands are on my knees. I'm not resting my body weight on my knees. My back's like a ski jump, so I'm not doing this, right? I'm not slouching, my chest is high, my rear end's out, and I'm just doing big circles with my knees. and. I shouldn't really feel like I'm working hard doing this. It should feel like I'm almost ready to move on, right? Maybe a little bit uncomfortable, but it's not really hard work, right? We're just checking in with ourselves and um, making sure that everything's kind of doing its job. And that way when we go uh, do our activity, um, we're able to ask our body um, what we want of it without any discomfort or pain or feeling like you're having to tiptoe around things you can and can't do. All right, so we've, uh, I started off with the ankle circles, these guys, and notice how I'm like, I dig my toes in and I do big circles and I'm not trying to really push the limit of how far I can go. I'm literally just taking my joints and just, just moving them, just like so, right? So I started with these as, as doing my introduction. I also have a mic now, so hopefully you guys can hear me a lot better. And uh, for those of you um, who want to follow along or want to see where we post these, we're going to be putting these on our info at Good Medicine Lodge YouTube page. So we'll have an archive, and I'm, I'm making the commitment to uh, better uh, inform you guys of what each of these uh, classes are uh, going to be entailing. Right. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking my pelvis, I'm rolling my pelvis forward, and I'm just bending uh, my front leg ever so slightly, right? So I'm just moving my hips forward. I'm not leaning with my belly, and I feel a nice, easy stretch come through my hips here, right? Um, a lot of people that I've worked with in my past, and keep in mind I've had no other job besides fitness, um, there's a lot of misconceptions about how to use stretching. And a lot of people think that stretching needs to be hard, it needs to hurt so good, or else you're not really getting the benefit of it. And we really wanna recognize that the body, if it's not used to something, it's gonna fight it. It's gonna protect you from overexerting, right? So in regards to your stretches, what we wanna be able to do is make sure that you're not pushing too hard, this is a little bit uncomfortable, right? Maybe just like on a scale of one to 10, 10 being like, oh my God, it hurts so much. One being like, you don't feel like you're doing anything. Let's keep these stretches to like a six. I really want you to develop awareness of where you're feeling it. Does it hurt? Does it feel good? Do you have any pain entering or exiting that stretch? And if you do, 
like, you know, back off, maybe take it to a four, right? So these phases of um, this mobility work and flexibility is just, again, about you taking away with you how these things are supposed to feel. Um, and that way, whether with me or on your own, you're gonna be able to replicate those feelings and do things safely. Um, I also like to uh, go back and forth, back and forth, so I breathe easy. And I just kind of, you know, really try to make that mind muscle connection of where I'm feeling that stretch. And I feel it here, right? Almost on my upper quad and a little bit in my hip. Um, no discomfort entering or exiting these stretches. No lower back pain. So if you can learn how to listen to your body, and your body is going to give you feedback on all these different stretches that we do. Um, so if you're doing this stretch and you feel it in your back, that's feedback. If you feel this stretch and you feel it in your knee, that's telling you something, right? So the goal for this stretch in particular is just to go hip and maybe upper quad, right? And we're gonna switch again. And when I like to do these stretches, I like to do these stretches like back and forth, back and forth, practicing those big belly stretches, or sorry, big belly breaths. In through the nose, fill out that belly with air and exhale through the mouth. I'm feeling the same thing on this side and everything feels good. And, uh, it's my first day back at doing this, so it's all gonna be easy. It's all gonna be re-entry and it's gonna be something that anybody can join in, right? So whether you are in a really advanced training routine, mobility and flexibility is just gonna make you even stronger and recover quicker. And that's what it's all about. If you haven't been working out, this is a great way to start off just to be able to you know, bring awareness again to just what moving properly should feel like. Um, and that's what I really want you guys to get away from your time with me. We're gonna do this one more time on each side. And when you guys hear me make that big breath, that, that loud in, inhale through my nose and exhale through my mouth, um, that's your cue to breathe along with me, right? Because sometimes I remember taking my clients through some of these stretches and they would be in that stretch and they'd be like, <clears throat> and they wouldn't breathe, right? So again, that's, you know, we wanna make this as passive as possible, as easy as possible, just relax doing it. Right? And last time on this side, and then we're gonna move on. All right, good. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a seat on the ground here. And um, I am out of practice, so bear with me just a bit, okay? So I have my right foot at my knee, and hopefully you guys can see that here, okay? And I'm just gonna practice just really good posture, chest high, rear end out, and if I need my hands to help me, that's totally fine, but ideally what I wanna be able to do is have enough mobility and flexibility in my hips for, be, for me to be able to maintain this position, right? And it's okay if you guys slouch a little bit or you feel like you're a little bit uncomfortable or you have to back out for just a second. This is all about, um, again, getting your body comfortable in these positions and there's, there's steps to that progress. I don't want you to feel like you're just jumping into the end result, right? Because that can have, uh, your body can have a negative reaction to that, which means that you know, uh, it's, you're pushing too much um, and it, you're gonna have some discomfort or you're gonna be sore from it. So the idea behind these stretches and mobility exercises is that you feel good. Like you don't feel like you're taking away from your ability to go about your day or it's not gonna take away from your workout that you have planned uh, later that afternoon or the next day. So as I puff my chest up and I tilt my pelvis back and I pitch forward at the waist, I can exaggerate that stretch come from the back of my leg, my hamstring, into my glute, my rear end. Right? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and switch sides here. Ooh, yeah, I'm a little bit tight, I can feel that. Chest high, <sighs> rear end out, it's nice and easy. And again, if I need to help myself, just hold myself upright, that's totally fine. Um, I'm a beginner today as well. I'm gonna try to watch the clock, so it's not gonna be too long. Goal today will be about maybe 45 minutes, and um, yeah, just about rounding out all the activity that I've, uh, that I've been up to. So that activity has been, uh, I've been doing a lot of cross-country skiing, classic and uh, skate skiing, and that's like 
been really cool and it's been really hard and I've been doing a lot of it. So I'm feeling those aches and pains. Um, and hopefully, as long as I'm not behind the eight ball too much, I'll be able to kind of uh, dig myself out of the hole. Grab chest high. Um, I remember uh, when I was working with everyone before doing these um, live feed workouts, um, I made a commitment that I was going to try to keep up with my, my part of the workout two days a week and keep my foot in the door because I really saw a benefit from doing it. And uh, I have to say I've been active, right, but I have not been doing um, what I promised. But that's okay, right, because now I'm here and I realize how good it felt and how good I felt doing it. And, um, I'm back at it again. So, yeah, another time, other side here. Now, when you guys are, you know, on Facebook and you're scrolling through your feed and you see me doing these exercises, don't feel like you have to hang out and do the whole workout, okay? Like, just pick and choose something that you can try maybe doing at home. Maybe it's just one of these poses. Maybe it's a handful of them, you know? Uh, like, take what you can, apply it to your day-to-day, -day and uh, yeah, this, you know, it doesn't have to be all or nothing, right? It can be just a little bit. All right, moving on. So now let's move into a pigeon, right? So how I set up on this. All right, so I'm gonna take my left leg, I'm gonna cross it over my right knee. And I'm gonna drop my belly into my inner thigh as I puff my chest up and I tilt my rear end back. And I really feel this coming through again, my uh, glute and my hamstring in the back. That's our big belly breath. people uh, complain about back discomfort, right? And I'm 42 years old now, and um, I'd be lying if I said I didn't wake up with my back uh, fatigued every now and again. But really what that's a result of is, you know, my hips really binding up. All right, so here's what I'm doing. I'm taking my right leg now, I'm crossing it over my left knee, puffing my chest up, and tilting my rear end back, right? And again, I feel that come right through here. Some of you guys might be able to go all the way down and make yourself as small as possible. Um, I can't do that, or I feel like if I tried to make myself as small as possible to the floor, I'm not really getting more out of this stretch here. Because remember, uh, in regards to that one to 10, we're going for a six today. Uh, I want you to feel what you're stretching. I don't want it to be uncomfortable, I just want it to be a little bit annoying, right? And again, that 10 is you're going really hard, you can't hold it anymore, it hurts a lot. One being like you never got off the couch. So uh, back to my back discomfort. When I wake up and my back's aching a little bit, that's a sign that I need to do uh, some stretching with my hips. Because as my quads and hamstrings and glutes and hip, uh, hips all bind up from all the activity that I'm doing, I typically feel that in my lower back. And that can be for really anyone who has a job, maybe they're seated a lot through the day, right? And their hips get really tight and their back hurts. Um, that could be from, I know when I used to ride a lot of bikes, I get back discomfort. And uh, again, you're constantly in that flexed position, pitched over your handlebars, and again, um, really lends itself that the hips get really tight. What's up, Saul? What's going on, dog? Nice to see you, pal. Um, but uh, yeah, so hips, hips, it's all in the hips, right? So again, this is one of my uh, favorite ones here to get that good glutes and hamstrings. Let's see, what else is happening? Um, we're pretty quiet right now. Not a lot of people wanting to travel to good medicine. Um, gosh, it doesn't surprise me with everything that's happening all over the world. But uh, yeah, so Valentine's Day will be pretty busy here. Um, but after that, it's gonna be pretty quiet, probably till the summer, you know? People wanna be safe and I can respect that, but um, we're really just uh, kinda like hanging out for still got tons of snow but uh, everyone's looking for that um, that big powder days we have a, a front coming in starting tomorrow we'll probably get like I think they're saying seven inches within the next uh, like 
five days. So that's cool, you know? Um, I've been super into, the, again, the cross-country skiing, so I've been uh, scratching my itch with that. Again, I'm feeling this come through the hips, and I'm not crushing this. I'm just feeling good doing it. <laughs> Half pigeon baby, that's right. Yeah. All right, so uh, let's move on, right? So let's move into a hurdler stretch. We can do these two different ways here. Um, so first one I'm gonna do is my right foot at my inner thigh, right? And I'm gonna practice that good posture, right? So just being able to support myself with my chest high, rearing it out. I mean, this is work, right? And it's uncomfortable. It's totally okay to back out, shake it off, because if you're not used to these kind of positions, they can be uncomfortable. And if you try too hard to maintain that position, we're gonna have uh, the opposite effect from what we're looking for. We want our body just to relax into it, open up into these stretches, open up into these positions. Um, and if we push too hard, it's just not gonna happen. We're gonna be really sore from it. So uh, today's workout isn't really about a workout. It's just about, again, getting that movement back. All right, so my chest is high, uh, my rear end's out. I'm hinging forward at my, my waist. I can feel a slight stretch come in the back of my, uh, my hamstring. And I do not feel that stretch come behind my knee. If you feel these stretches move into your joint, like directly behind your knee, or like let's say uh, on your spine, or uh, the ankle, or the Achilles, if you feel it move into the joint, that means that you're overshooting that stretch and you gotta back off a bit, right? So in this position here, I just bend my legs slightly and that's gonna move that stretch further up into the belly of the muscle. All right, I'm gonna switch here. So again, chest high, pitching forward at the waist, just feeling good doing it. And um, I feel this move again into the back of my leg. Now, if I wanted to make this a, like a compound stretch, multiple joints, multiple muscles, then I can start to pitch forward, right? And as I tuck my chin into my chest, and I pitch forward at the waist, I can now feel this move into my upper back, a little bit of my lower back, but again, primarily into my hamstring. and. I'm carrying a lot of tension uh, in my upper back from pulling, cross-country skiing, um, and I can really feel it there. So your body's gonna tell you what, um, what is really going on, and we just gotta learn how to listen, right? So again, six on that scale of one to 10. All right. And then we're gonna switch again, and then we're gonna change the pose, right? So now we're gonna go with the leg behind us. Now this is a little bit more advanced than the version that we just did, but again, chest high, right? Rear end out. Good, I feel, now I feel a little bit more of my groin, my hamstring. I feel all those postural muscles working to help support myself in this position. And again, um, don't feel like you have to hold that position. If it's uncomfortable, again, just back out. Down, good. And hopefully the uh, the audio is going to be much better than uh, how it was before. We finally figured that out. students in the class or no one to laugh at my corny jokes. <laughs> I'm over here. Oh. I'm a shadow. I was today. pretending that she wasn't here. <laughs> I'm a shadow today. Well, we have a new video of the lodge coming out. Ooh, in that's the next exciting. Couple weeks. Yeah. That'll show some of the lodge, which will be cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a clip of you doing some workout. Yeah. Stretching. Yeah. So moving on, this is another one of my favorites, all right? So I'm gonna try to position myself so I can make sure that you guys see me here. I'm gonna lie on my back. I'm gonna take my right foot and cross it over my left knee. I'm gonna shimmy my left foot over, and as I'm shimmying that left foot over, my left knee is gonna take my ankle and pull 
my right leg across my body. Now as I'm doing this, I'm trying to drive that hip into the ground. So I don't want to corkscrew my back like this, right? I just wanted to just ever so slightly pull that leg across my body and I can feel that stretch come through here, right? And I'm just literally letting gravity do its part, right? As I practice those big deep breaths, Switch. And as I shimmy that right foot over, and it pulls my left leg across my body as I drive that hip into the floor. And just breathe and relax. So back in my old training days, um, I used to have a lot of people ask me, uh, I don't know if I'm getting it, or I don't know if I'm feeling it right, or uh, is this supposed to hurt, or is this supposed to, you know, am I supposed to be feeling it here or there? So just like studying for a test, it's all about you understanding how your body reacts to these things. So as I'm feeling this stretch, I feel it, a little bit in my inner thigh. Now that's not what I'm looking for. That's what we call impingement, right? So my groin is not necessarily releasing, allowing this stretch to happen, okay? So where I should feel it is coming through my rear, right? And maybe a little bit of my hamstring. Um, again, all, everything your body tells you is feedback. And it's feedback specifically for you. So what do you do with that information, right? So you, you practice going in and out and relaxing. You do these workouts over and over and over again, and hopefully over time, your body will become accustomed to what you're asking of it, and you're not gonna have that pain or discomfort. And there's ways to modify all these different stretches so it's not so intense. And again, it's just about like really bringing that connection back to you and what your body's looking for. It's all about just feeling good. So this next one here, all right, so uh, my feet are flat on the floor. I'm just gonna let my legs fall over to one side, right? I'm gonna take my hands, I'll put my hands on my hips, and what this is doing, it's helping me just realize that my hips are staying on the floor. My hands just ever so slightly press my hips down as I let gravity pull my knees into the floor, right? And here I can feel my, my hips, uh, or sorry, my femurs, my ball of my femur inside my hip just moving, right? I'm just letting gravity do its part. <sighs> Practicing those big deep breaths. And switch again. This is nice and cozy. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, it feels good. Yeah. All right, moving on. All right, so now let's move into our hands and knees. All right, so uh, what I'm gonna do is my cats and cows. Okay, so I'm gonna tuck my chin into my chest. I'm gonna roll my pelvis forward. I'm gonna push my upper back into the ceiling as much as I can. And then I'm gonna let my belly hang down to the ground and I'll let my shoulder blades fall into the ceiling, right? Now it's not about how going, it's not about going as far as you can, it's really just about moving every single one of those vertebrae, exaggerating that tightness, just butting up against that feeling of being uncomfortable without crossing that threshold. And then let's do this uh, two more times, please. So chin into the chest, Hips roll forward, arching that back. I want the middle of my back to touch the ceiling. No holding your breath. Good, and one more time. All right, good. So now we're gonna move into a child's pose. We're gonna make ourselves this 
close to the ground as possible. We're gonna open our legs up a little bit so we can just rest our torso between our legs. And we're gonna extend our arms out. And I want your fingertips to reach toward that uh, wall in front of you, right? So now I feel the stretch move into the, my armpits, my upper back. And every breath I take, I can just relax a little bit further into this stretch. And again, with no pain, no discomfort, reaching my fingertips even further. And I'm gonna go ahead and shimmy both of my hands over to one side, and I'm gonna be reaching a little bit further with that left hand, exaggerating that stretch through the left side of my body, reaching even more. Another question I get quite a bit is, Ryan, how long should I hold these stretches for? You know, I like, you know, let's just say 30 seconds, but don't just hold it for 30 and move on to the next stretch. Come in and out, in and out, in and out. So now let's move into bird dogs. Okay, so this is a really good one for um, upper back mobility, lower back strength and balance. So how I set up, hands directly underneath the shoulders, knees directly underneath the hips. My back is in what I call a neutral spine, right? So I'm not like this, I'm not like this. I'm in that happy medium. And my goal is as I transition my weight and move into this exercise, that I'm able to maintain this position, right? So I'll see a lot of people go into that one side or uh, start doing the exercise and their form really starts to fall apart, right? So the primary uh, goal of this is to maintain this position, that neutral spot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna extend our right hand out, palm toward the ceiling as you drive your shoulder into uh, like ground, ground your shoulder, right? So you're not letting your shoulder creep up to your ear, you're keeping it grounded, right? Palm up, and we're gonna extend that left leg, toes toward the floor. And don't think about necessarily going up to the ceiling, think about lengthening as you draw your belly button in. And as I draw my belly button in, I contract my rear, then I can extend that heel a little bit further into the ceiling and toward that far wall, right? And now I'm gonna curl into a ball, Elbow touches the knee, right? And I'm gonna extend back out. So as I run through my checklist, right? So palm up, arm straight, shoulder down and grounded. I'm not collapsing into my shoulder blades as I contract my rear, draw my belly button in and extend that leg even further, wrenching, lengthening. <sighs> Curling into that ball again. We're gonna do one more uh, on this side and then we're gonna switch. So. You're gonna hear me talk about these checklists, right? Mentally running through what you should be looking for, how it should feel, right? And just by running through that checklist and, and really you know, bringing that awareness to where you're feeling that tension, you're doing the work. So don't get caught up in repetitions, just get caught up in the feeling, right? It should all feel good, it should all feel a little bit uncomfortable without crossing that threshold of uh, being in pain. What's up, Ann? Nice to see you. Hey guy, you. Yeah. All right, so now I'm switching sides. All right, so left hand, palm toward the ceiling, arm straight, shoulder down, eyes into the floor. Right, my belly button's drawn in as I contract my rear. I pull my heel uh, toward the ceiling, but I'm also lengthening my body as much as possible. This is where the work is right here. Holding that position, right? So shoulder down, arm straight, reaching, eyes to the floor, that neutral spine, belly button drawn in. Contracting that rear, we're gonna curl into that ball. Man, I remember when I used to be able to do 10 of these like easy all day, now three's a challenge. I'm out of practice, right? So, but hopefully um, everyone's gonna be able to get some good information out of this stuff, right? So shoulder down, arm straight, palm up, right? Eyes to the floor, belly button drawn in, leg straight, contracting that rear, toes toward the floor, good. 
Elbow touches the knee, and one last time here. Good, reaching, lengthening. And your back needs a little bend, is that okay? Yep, yep, that's fine. You're just wanting to reach back, um, so, but not necessarily straight. So let's say, for instance, um, good question, right? So let's say, for instance, um, I was just trying to focus on my legs straight. Look what happens, how my, my body is going to adjust and it basically it's rotate twisting. the foot, right? Even yeah. though my leg's straight, now all of a sudden I'm working something different, right? Oh. So ultimately the goal of this exercise was uh, the shoulder girdle support structure in the upper body, uh, belly button, lower back, and glutes and hamstrings. Okay. So legs so straight. If you feel your leg kind of twisting, you, you yeah. really don't focus on being straight, just focus yeah. on Yeah, um, and again, not that it's necessarily wrong, it's what's the goal of this exercise, and it was what I, I just previously mentioned. Okay. okay? Um, all right, so moving on. Uh, this is one of my favorite ones. So back to the uh, four points, hands and knees. We're gonna go fingertips behind the ear, and we're gonna do this in three phases again. Um, and before we even get to that point, let's go ahead and see if we can like engage our inner thighs. And what that's gonna do is it's basically gonna help support um, our hips and keep them in position. Okay, so what I'm doing here is like on a scale of one to 10, I'm bringing my knees together without actually bringing them together. Bringing them together I'm just engaging them. Um, I'm gonna say on a scale of one to 10, like a two. Fingertips behind the ears, I'm gonna do this in a couple phases. The first one's gonna be elbow goes back as far as it can, right? Then it's gonna be shoulder blades contract as far as they possibly contract, and then your eyes are gonna look for your elbow over your shoulder, right? So. This is where the inner thighs being engaged is important because if I don't have my inner thighs engaged, my back's gonna turn into a corkscrew and we don't want that. So this is just upper back mobility, right? Thoracic spine. We're gonna try that again, All right? So reset, engaging the inner thighs, elbow first, shoulder blades, and then your eyes are gonna look for your elbow. Woo, man, this is tough for me. Good, and then back down. Let's see if we can do five on each side. We'll do uh, three more. Elbow. Shoulder blades and your eyes are gonna look for your elbow. Elbow, shoulder blades, eyes look for your elbow. Good, and last one here. Elbow, shoulder blades, eyes look for your elbow. Nice job, all right. We're gonna do that again, other side please. And again, no lower back discomfort, right? So, uh, same position as the, like the previous exercise. Hands directly underneath the shoulders, right? Knees directly underneath the hips. I'm gonna engage my inner thighs just by trying to bring my knees together without actually trying to bring them together. Fingertips behind the ears. Elbow first, shoulder blades retract, and then your eyes are gonna look for your elbows. Good, and then back down. Good, elbows, shoulder blades, and eyes look. We're gonna do five on this side. And all these videos will be on our YouTube page, info at Good Medicine. Elbow, shoulder blades, and then eyes. Lots of count here. I think we got one more. Elbow, shoulder blades, and then eyes look for the elbow. All right, very good. Cool. Man, that's some work, huh? warming here now. Yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and work into some upper body uh, mobility and we'll stand up and do these and then uh, we'll do a little bit of core and I'll check the clock and we can uh, take it from there. All right. Oh, all right, so let's go ahead and do some uh, wrist circles here. And nothing crazy, right? Um, just moving. And I like to start at the end of the extremities and work our way up, right? So when we started this workout video, we started with the ankles and the knees and the hips. Here, we're gonna uh, start with the wrists, move into the elbows, and then more upper body. All right, so now I'm gonna take those fingers and I'll pull them back and get a nice stretch in my forearm. I have to say I'm, uh, you know, being 42 years old, you know, I'm feeling my age, you know? I guess this is what 42 is supposed to feel like, maybe? <laughs> I don't know. I don't 
Yeah, I did do some bad things. Yeah. I went snowboarding the other day and my wrist and my fingers were very sore because I don't usually do that motion with the cranking of the binding so much. Mm. So, you know, a good arm hand stretch is always a good idea. Yeah. All right, so the next one. Think about your elbows in a fixed position and our uh, forearms are propellers. Right? I remember uh, when we did these videos the first time around, I seen the bike, people with the bikes yeah. riding up to the mountain with their skis on yeah. their backs. Well, the ski resort was closed last. Yeah. It was late March of last year, and you couldn't get up there to ski unless you All right, next one. Uh, arm into the ceiling, good reach. And lots of body English here, good. And it's okay to let that shoulder go right up to the ear. Totally fine. And I feel like I'm all the way down my side. I remember when I was a kid, my grandma used to do these every morning. Drink a big glass of water and do her stretching. It's funny, I wake up early every morning with the intent do that, but then it's like, I gotta make my coffee, you know, I just uh, pet my dog and give him some snuggles, and then Caleb wakes up or something like that. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's pretty much no excuses. I always find time to get it in. It's just that maybe it's not necessarily the best decision of what I'm getting in, you know? Right. I think mentally I get really excited. Physically, my body wants to chill out a bit more. Right. Um, all right, so uh, shoulder, kidney, right? We're just, let's relax and do it here, all right? Just letting gravity do its part and we're just using momentum to assist in the stretch. Let's see. Excuse me, I'm gonna check the time. And I guess we've been at this for a bit here, huh? About 40 minutes already. Yeah. I missed the first 10, I think. All right. Oh, all right, so let's go ahead and put our hands behind our back. We have a good posture, shoulders grounded. Why don't you just puff your chest up, right? So now I feel this come through uh, my shoulders and I'm not trying to, you know, pitch forward and see how high I can get my hands. It's just a matter of, again, maintaining that posture. Think about that string on top of your head, driving those shoulders down. And how do you have your hands? Oh, I'm just uh, holding on to my thumb, just connecting my hands anyway, really. It's fine. Right? And then we're going to relax and pitch forward and kind of show an exaggerated slouch. And then we're gonna do that again, pumping that chest up. Good, string on the head. And again, relax and slouch. And I'm exaggerating, I'm rolling my pelvis forward, I'm just focusing on moving my upper part of my back, right? And then open back up. This is one of my favorites, it's the swan dive. So chest high, rear end out, and then we're gonna give ourselves that big hug. And how we do that is we take our form, we're gonna grab a hold of our elbow, right? We're gonna tuck that elbow into the tummy with the hips forward, we're gonna curl into a ball. And we're gonna open back up, chest high, we're retracting our shoulder blades, we're driving our shoulders down, string on the head, lengthening that spine, lengthening the body, and we're gonna give ourselves a hug the other way, right? Elbows into the tummy, chin into the chest. Now, with this movement in particular, I can really get some leverage and challenge myself. But remember that scale of one to 10, no more than a six. Elbows into the tummy, chin into the chest. And uh, again, I do like to repeat these. And if I'm feeling tension in a certain position or I'm doing a 
exercise and it's really difficult and it's a challenge, I'll just repeat that exercise over and over and over again and try to make it as passive as possible, right? And I'm using that forearm as a lever to spread my shoulder blades apart, curling into that ball, chin into the chest. And this is a really good one for a lot of people who drive or work at the computer or read a book or eat a lot or sit on the couch watching TV. Everything that we do just pulls everything forward. So what we want to be able to do through our activity is open that up, right? And that's what we're trying to do here. All right, cool. Let's do uh, a couple core exercises and um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll call it. And I thought this was a, a really good start to get kind of back into it. These workouts are going to be like this, right? So the idea is it's not a hard workout. It's either going to supplement what you're already doing by bringing just more awareness to you and what your training on your own is doing to your body. If you're new to working out, this is a great start because it's going to teach you how your body should feel doing activity, right? And there's the biggest disconnect with people who are new to fitness is that they don't know how it's supposed to feel. They think it's supposed to hurt and they think that that's where the results come from and that couldn't be further from the case. Um, and there's the uh, person who just like, likes to be active and recreate and have fun and feel good, right? This isn't gonna take away from that, but how we get stronger, how we, get, how we become more fit is just also doing more volume, more work within the week, and this is a way of adding that element and uh, really supplementing everything else that we do. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and get into some of that core work. And one of my favorite exercises is the hip bridge. All right, so on our back, all right, so when I do this here, watch my knees, right? So I'm gonna start with a double leg hip bridge, and my instinct is to open up my knees when I bridge. So as I look down the aisle here, I wanna make sure that my knees are directly in front of my hips. And as I bridge, I'm feeling this come through the front of my thighs, right? Right here. And that's not wrong, that's just this feedback of your body telling you what's tight. So. As you're doing your bridge and you're pushing with your heels, you're contracting your rear end, and you look down and you make sure that your body is not going with that path of least resistance, right? You're just feeling that stretch on the front side, and as you repeat this exercise, as you drop, you feel that tension come off, and you're gonna get right back up there, contracting your rear, leading with the hips, not with the belly button, right? No lower back discomfort. I should feel this eventually come to my rear, my backside, and it won't be so much quads, but this is normal. Like, it's normal for a lot of people. If you feel it in your quads, that's what's tight, and that's what's getting stretched in this exercise, right? Even though it's a strength exercise, the quads are getting away, which is totally fine. It's just new. The body needs a, a little bit of time to adjust to it, right? We're not resting at the bottom. We're back up, right? We're contracting that rear, feeling that stretch come through the front side of the legs. Good. Just enough to feel the tension come off and back up. Contracting that rear, pushing those hips forward. Good. And I'm not caught up on repetitions, right? I'm going by a scale of one to 10. I want to get that feeling, and I want to get that feeling relatively quickly without overreaching, right? So in a perfect world, that's anywhere between five to 20 repetitions, right? And I'm not just going one, two, three, and completely like mentally disconnecting from this exercise. I'm exaggerating that pause, exaggerating that work, right? I'm really making that mind muscle connection of what I'm supposed to be doing, right? Exaggerating that feeling. And then that's where the work is, right? Don't get caught up in how many you're doing. I mean, it helps, but it's easy to, again, check out from that completely. All right, so. Uh, hip bridge, one of the most important exercises that you can do, personal opinion, right? Now we're gonna move into a stomach crunch. All right, so uh, when we do our stomach crunch, I like fingertips behind the ears, that way we're just not pulling on the head, right? So, uh, elbows are open toward the ceiling. We're gonna curl one vertebrae at a time and exaggerate that pause, right? And we're only gonna drop enough to where we feel that tension come off and back up. Exaggerating that pause, good. Let's see if we can do 
10, and then we're going to do a modification of this exercise. So I think I got about another five. both our legs fall over to one side. And again, we're gonna be crunching almost across our body, right? So now I feel it come through my side. We're gonna do 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, very good. And we're gonna switch over side. Two, very good, all right. So now, my abs are completely fatigued. I'm either gonna roll to the side and get up or I'm just gonna grab a hold of my leg and then pull myself up that way. That way, um, you're not gonna risk hurting your back getting straight up. All right, so that was pretty good. All right, so we did bridge, we did crunch. Um, now let's move into a, uh, like a reverse fly of some sort. So, back up on uh, your feet, please. All right, so uh, another modified good morning with the upper back. So what I'm gonna try to do here is I'm gonna try to drive my bottom back toward the wall behind me, right? So now at this point, I can feel a slight stretch in the back of my legs, okay? So what I'm not feeling is it behind my knees, and if I do, I just bend my legs slightly, right? And my back's like that ski jump, right? So I'm not slouching, right? I'm not feeling this in my lower back by being, you know, like too erect happy medium, right? Now at this point, I'm gonna take my arms, I'm gonna do the Y of the YMCA, I'm gonna exaggerate that pause. Good, and relax until that tension comes off, and again, that Y, retract those shoulder blades, right? And it's important that we, again, we keep that neutral spine, so I don't want you guys looking up doing this exercise, I stay on the floor, my back is straight, good. Retracting those shoulder blades, Lengthening those arms as I extend my arms and retract those shoulder blades. It's exaggerating that stretch behind my legs. Good. Let's see if we can maybe do five more of these. And really, all I care about is that feeling of the work where we're supposed to be getting it. So back the leg, legs and upper back. How's everyone doing there? Good. Yeah? My heart's going on. I know, there. right? How long have we been? Uh, gosh, we're coming up on 50 minutes here. So let's run through those three exercises one more time, and then we're going to sign off and uh, call that our workout for the day. So uh, again, to recap here, Tuesdays and Fridays, 1 o'clock-ish, give or take, all these videos will be posted on our YouTube page at Info at Good Medicine. And um, I'm making a commitment to have better audio quality and also uh, bullet point what each, work, eat, what each workout uh, encompasses. So that way you can go through our library and pick and choose which exercises that you want. All right, so uh, let's hit it again. Bridges, crunches, and then reverse fly. And then that's it for the day. All right, so uh, if you felt like Doing the bridge with two feet was easy. Let's go ahead and just hover one foot, right? So things that are important here is that you're not letting your hips sag. See how my, my hips just kind of fall toward the floor here? Right, so I always like to start off with two feet, get into position. Hands are here really just as a, uh, a way of assessing what's happening, right? So if I raise one leg and my hip falls, I'm gonna feel that, right? Or let's say for instance, if I'm doing my bridge, and I'm not really quite getting that feeling in my rear, I can literally put my hands on my bottom and, and focus on squeezing my rear, right? Not with my hands, but like just contracting that rear, and my hands will feel that. So it's just another way of getting some feedback on your body. Um, I'm leading with the hips, not the belly button, right? Because if you lead with the tummy, you're gonna feel this move into your lower back. 
And as I look down the aisle, right, my knees are directly in front of my hips and I'm not opening my legs up. All right, so let's see if we can do 10 here. Exaggerating that pause. Hands are there, help just in case, good. Keeping those hips up, transitioning sides. All right, and I can feel that right where that hamstring connects into my rear, right? So no lower back. This is nine. Eight. fingertips behind the ears, curling into that ball. We're gonna do 10, 10, and 10, right? Curling up into that ball, right? So don't think about a sit-up, right? We wanna be able to roll into that ball, exaggerate that pause, because when you look at someone with a six pack, that top part of the pack is responsible for this much of the crunch, the next pack responsible for that much of the crunch, and so on, so 10. So I remember from the days of working in a gym, um, I would be working out, we are talking to someone about training or fitness or whatever, and they would tell me, oh, I can do 100 crunches, right? And I was like, oh, well, that's cool. I can do 100 bicep curls with a pencil. <laughs> Not that I'm saying that they weren't working hard, but the idea is to challenge yourself, challenge yourself quickly, get that work done, and then move on. You don't want to become like economical or efficient at like resistance training, right? So we want, with resistance training, we want to like work, work hard, and then focus on our recovery, right? With group exercise classes where you're, you know, you're running in place, you're doing this, you're doing that, you're doing your weights, you're not really focusing on, you're not really focusing on like an exercise at hand, you're just you know doing a bunch of different things. Now, if that's your only workout for the day, great. It's the only workout for the week, great. But you want to be able to have a focus with what you're doing. And resistance training should be resistance training. Aerobic conditioning should be aerobic conditioning. Balance, you know, like have it as a purpose. That way you can really see uh, your results, see your success. Doing a little bit of everything, sure, you'll get some success, but it's really about um, getting that success to translate into your day-to-day -day and being consistent is the most important part of that. So um, I guess uh, we now have our reverse slides, yeah. All right. So driving that rear end back, looking for that stretch behind the legs, right? Back in that neutral position, belly button drawn in, shoulders down, exaggerate that pause. As you retract those shoulder blades, think about those wings, right? You're flapping those wings. Tension comes off. Good. Eight. Four. Three. Two. All right, thank you for joining. It's fun to be back at this. I'm a little bit out of practice, but I'll come back, you know, uh, yeah, tell your friends, and we hope to see you next time. Thank you.
Yo, Greg.